What's up world, welcome back to the channel and before we get into this video I just want to say thank you, thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time here make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because I'm bringing more and more content new for 2020. So this is the thing that's going on. You click into the thumbnail because you want to see how to change your own brakes on a 335 or most BMWs for that matter. Okay, let's go through some of the tools we're gonna need to complete this job. We got a mini sledgehammer, a big enough G clamp. We have a flat head, a small pry bar. We have a 3 8 ratchet with a T45 socket. We have an 18 millimeter half inch socket. We also have an 18 millimeter gear wrench. We also have an 18 millimeter standard wrench. And we have a half inch ratchet with a 17 millimeter socket and also a 19 millimeter wrench for leverage and this is a six millimeter allen key and some brake cleaner and a pipe handle all right we're out so let's go over the parts i got these parts from fcp euro they specialize in european oem and performance parts they have an amazing program that allows you to get a guaranteed replacement for life. So I opted out for the Zimmerman coated and drilled rotors and the Akibono uh, Euro premium pads. As you can see, these, these rotors are not really directional because both rotors are identical in the pattern of the way that the holes are drilled. So this means I can put them on either left or right, unlike my stop text, which requires you to put it in a designated area. Okay, for safety reasons, you wanna make sure you chalk the vehicle in the rear of the car, and also you wanna to refer to your owner's manual to find out what are the safe lifting points on your vehicle. So I'm using a hydraulic floor jack, and I'm gonna go chalk the wheels. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do this without any power tools. So what you wanna do is before you raise the vehicle off the ground, you wanna crack the lugs loose because if you try to do this with the wheel off the ground, it's just gonna spin the tire. And if you're working alone, it's gonna be pretty difficult. So for this, you're gonna need the 17 millimeter and the half inch ratchet or a breaker bar and usually an extension to give you some leverage. So here's my half inch drive with my 17 millimeter and I'm using the jack handle as leverage. For video purposes, I already pre-loosened some of this stuff just to make the video a little faster. So what you wanna do is loosen the wheel. Everyone knows it's lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. So what you would do is put the leverage on there and pry down on it to loosen the wheel. So you would do that for each lug before we raise the car. The next safety step is to use a jack stand. In case your jack fails or for some reason it comes down, you won't drop the car on the floor, especially if you're underneath it. You don't wanna get hurt. So a safe place to put the jack stand is usually on a lift point or the frame of the car or a subframe. I just place mines under the front subframe.
All right, now that we have the wheel off, you guys can see the brake caliper and the brake rotor. So you see this is the wheel spacer. I have to remove this first to gain access to the set screw. Wheel spacer removed. This is actually a hub centric wheel spacer. So it's specifically designed to fit the diameter of this hub. The next step, we wanna grab our six millimeter Allen key. And sometimes this can be pretty tight. And if you're doing this by hand, I like to use a flat screwdriver in between the rotor to jam it. So this way it won't spin. And then I'm gonna insert my six millimeter Allen key and loosen the set screw. The next step is you want to turn the steering wheel to have the caliper facing towards you so you can access the hardware in the rear of the caliper. So if you're doing this with hand tools, sometimes the bolts can be a pain to remove. So you're going to have to use some form of leverage. I already pre-loosened them, but I'm going to show you the tips that I use to get them loose. But before we do that, we're gonna have to remove this anti-rattle clip. This little spring device right here on the front of the caliper. Next time you wanna be more careful. You see how it just like springed out on me? That's why it's important to wear safety glasses. So now that's removed, there are two bolts holding the caliper onto the assembly and those are gonna be 18 millimeters. So you might wanna just stick your head back there with a flashlight and you'll see the bolts that I'm talking about. So for this, I'm gonna use a half inch uh, deep socket 18 millimeter with my half inch drive. So you see the the ratchet sticking out there. So sometimes if you can't loosen it by hand, what I like to do is take the sledgehammer and kind of tap it down like this and the shock impact will help loosen the bolt. Make sure you loosen both bolts before you actually remove one because that will help you get the caliper off easier. So here's one bolt. This is what it should look like. If it would focus. As for the second bolt, it's kind of hard to get in there with a deep socket. So I like to use an 18 millimeter wrench. So with the 18 millimeter wrench there on top, it might be hard for you to loosen it as well. This is where the 19 millimeter wrench comes into play. I use it as leverage. So I'm gonna show you how this works. So if I'm loosening this way, right? You're gonna take your other wrench and you're gonna stick it on there. Let's see. Like this. Can you guys see that? So what this does, it gives you an extension to lever the wrench to apply more force, if that makes sense. And then once you crack it loose, you can switch over to your speed wrench, the 18 millimeter with the gear inside. So it's important that you take note on which wheel has the wheel speeds, not the wheel speed, the brake wear sensor. Uh, on BMW, they use one in the front, one in the rear. In my case, the wear sensor is on the passenger, actually on the driver's front. So when I take this off, it's gonna be kind of heavy and I don't wanna strain the wear sensor because 
I'm gonna reuse it because mine's is now we have the second bolt removed okay in my case the rotor came off by itself but usually if your brace hasn't been changed in a long time this would actually stick onto the hub and then you would just use a hammer from the rear and give it a, a huge whack and that will loosen the rotor we have the old rotor off this is actually a stop tech rotor it has the the slots as well as the drilled holes I opted for um, FCP Euro parts because they are a replacement guarantee for life and the price was a little more affordable than these stop tech rotors so if you look at the rotor carefully you see there's a designated hole for the set screw and you need to align them properly on the hub so I'll just rotate it to 12 o'clock and then place the rotor on there is push the piston back inside the caliper so I'm gonna take the old brake pad that goes inside of the caliper side and then I'm okay now you guys could kind of observe really quick how I have the G clamp set up and then all I'm going to do is twist the clamp tight in order to press back in the piston. The, the piston should go back in fairly easy. If for some reason you have to apply some crazy excessive force, that means the caliper may be seizing. I was having an issue. Usually I can sneak these on. But um, I decided to show you guys the proper way. So using a T45, I removed these two caliper pins here with a T45. So we're gonna do this separately. It's gonna be a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do is place the caliper bracket on first, like so. And then we have the bolt. It's important that you hand thread these bolts in first before you use any kind of power tools so that way you don't cross thread the threads. Okay, notice that the brake pads have two different type of clips on them. The three prong one is for the piston side and the two prong is for the opposite side. Before we install the brake pads, we're gonna apply this Molly brake loop to the backing plate.
notice that the brake pads have a shape to it and the broader side it always rides on the outside diameter of the brake rotor so you gotta face it in this orientation in the caliper next is to take the outside pad and place it in the caliper as well this is kind of unique to the 335 so now you can see both brake pads sitting inside of the caliper and then we just slide it on like that now on the rear of the caliper there's these two plastic caps that you need to remove in order to get those pins back in so with the two caps removed I'm gonna reinstall these pins now that I'm looking at them there's actually two different sizes one is short, one is long. So if you look at the back of the caliper, you can see that this well is much deeper. So the long pin is going to go in this hole. So we inserted the long pin in that hole and the short pin in the second hole there like that you guys can see that oops now we put this back on alright that's back on time to put the wheel back on